Are you reaching your divine destiny? Prayer, faith, holiness are key to reaching your destiny. Join Prophet Nana Seopokusa Kodye get you closer to your God in prayer. Ignorant is more dangerous than HIV. In fact, you have to be ignorant for the devil to attack you. Because ignorance is the strength of the oppressor. So for somebody to oppress you, whether the devil or human being, anytime somebody is oppressing you, the person knows something you don't know. Jesus said that you are free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Or the truth shall make you free. So you can't know the truth and be in bondage. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, Good to see you Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Talk to somebody. Tell somebody, I love you by force. I love you by force. I love you by force. Hallelujah. Tell the person on your left and your right, say, I mean it. I love you by force. And tell the person, The way you are, I have to love you by force. I don't have a choice. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Well, we want to salute Apostle Bodhi Dankwa for. Wow. I want to salute him for his commitment and love, holding the fort for God's work. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, our prayers has been with him. It's one of the uh, it's one of the finest and the gentlemen of God I've ever met in my life. Hallelujah. Very fine man. Very gentleman. Very I, I was telling the people in Israel that I've learned a lot of things from him. Hallelujah. That is why, I, because of my sensitivity nature, I don't want to associate with the wrong people. Because I easily learn. So when there's something wrong with you, I'll quickly learn it. Yes. For some, I, unconsciously, you see me doing it. Uh, so I'm very careful who I hang around. Hallelujah. Because I will learn. And, 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 and uh, Mama Bodhi Damka was with that in Israel. Very... Uh, uh, there's something he said the last day that I've been meditating. Yeah, you show. And now grow. I've been thinking about it. Hallelujah. It's looking good. We want to salute this couple. We honor you and we love you so much. Hallelujah. We want you to know that we love you. We love you. We don't take you for granted and take you light at all. And, and we, we, we highly appreciate you, Apostle, for your word and the good things. Hallelujah. And God bless you. Amen. And look at somebody and tell the person I'm also here. Tell the person I'm here. I'm here. I'm seriously here. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be God. The choir is doing very wonderful. I like your very wonderful. Hallelujah. So keep doing it. If you don't have any group now, join the choir. The only one who is not qualified to join the choir is anybody who is hundred years old. So if you are below hundred years old, you are welcome into the choir. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, um, um, I want to give you faith food. Hallelujah. Faith food. Somebody say faith food. Uh, the kind of generation we find ourselves in, everybody must make sure that you build your faith. Make sure that your faith is growing. The reason why I'm preaching a lot of the faith is that God spoke to me and said that where we are going, everybody will need faith to survive. You will not need money to survive. You will need faith to survive. Money is losing its value. Money is losing value. The greatest economy in the world is going through crisis. If America is going through crisis, the Ghana must fast and pray. You are not hearing me. I've been preaching. Hallelujah. The greatest economies in the world are struggling. Seriously. America is struggling. China is claiming that they are rich, but they depend on America. So you are saying that you are wealthy, but you depend on somebody. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? When Americans shut their government for almost one month, it affected China a lot. So even China with their financial power is still depend on America. So it tells you that when the financial, uh, uh, how do I put it? How do I put it? When, when the financial champions are coming down, then you know that everybody must learn to live by faith. Hallelujah. 
faith gives you the capacity to still rejoice when there is nothing in your pocket it doesn't really affect your soul it doesn't really bring depression because living by faith is absolute depending on god and you know that because he lives you can face tomorrow if you are not living by faith then you will be depressed you will be oppressed you'll be compressed you'll be suppressed and you'll be downpressed and superpressed the pressing comes upon you when faith is absent so this morning i want to give you faith food this is how it is important for you not to sit in at home on sunday morning even if you come to all night you have no right to sit on sunday morning anybody who hears me soon is already a failure it is against biblical principles forsake not the assemblies of your gathering so i spend a lot of time praying when i wake up this early morning but i cannot compare that single prayer to when i meet you together and we are worshiping it is called the corporate anointing in the presence of god your weakness dies in your presence of god your mind is renewed in the presence of god your capacity is built up you are not listening to me here this morning in the presence of god god gives you new understanding and revelation get wisdom but in all thy getting get understanding so you cannot take church for granted if you study the bible from genesis to revelation as particularly in the old testament you will realize that anytime the situation the economic situations become very tough in every generation the only thing that gets valued that time is the word the word never devalues the word never loses its value are you listening to what i'm talking about woe unto you when you are going through crisis and you don't have god's word I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to put ice in. I will say it the way it is. When you go to hospital, they give you chloroquine. You don't ask what is used to produce it. You believe that when you swallow it, your malaria will go. That is the same way you must not know how the word of God is going to work. Take the word the way it is and swallow it. The unadulterated word of the Lord is what I'm talking about. Listen, without the word, you don't have a future. <laughs> Today, this morning, I come across a scripture. Very interesting. I don't. I was meditating this morning, and God whispered a scripture, I'm trying to get a message to preach. In the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus Christ is hanging around preaching at the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus Christ came around. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. He came around a place and he saw some fishermen. Now, when he has left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch up onto the deep and let down your net for the drought. To so, Verse 5. Listen to Peter. And Simon answered, said unto Master, we have toiled all night. We have toiled all night. We have worked with uh, uh, Institute of Journalism. We have worked with Ministry of Finance. We have started our own business. We started a microfinance business. We have toiled all night and we have taken nothing. So toil is not a sign of productivity. And those of you who are not clapping, give me one reason why you are not clapping for Jesus. The fact that you are toiling does not mean you are productive. We have toiled all night. These men were in the sea from, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And there was nothing, not even tilapia. He said, we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing. I'm teaching you what the word of God can do with your life. Don't joke with it. Listen, run to everywhere that you can get faith food. This morning, I'm giving you faith food. Faith is not in the same level. He said that Jesus referred to some people. Why is it that you have no faith? You of little faith. Some people say that I have not seen such a great faith. Which position are you? Responsibility, spiritual responsibility is the price for spiritual greatness. It doesn't just fall on you. I'm preaching good. Don't stop me. Hallelujah. We have told all night, Master. We have told all night. We have told without listen. We have told all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, 
nevertheless at your word we have told all night Jesus Christ we have told all night and we have taken nothing nevertheless at your word we have told all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word nevertheless at your word so listen outside the word you will toil This is it. This is the conclusion of the matter. Outside the world, your marriage will be a toiling home. Outside the world, you can never love your wife. Outside the world, you can never love your husband. Outside the world, you cannot submit your husband. Outside the world, Uber Chimpra. You will be sitting in church and living in, 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 in absolute idolatry. Outside the world. When you step out of the word, you will sink. I don't care who you are. I was studying some book and they told me all the invention, all the inventions in the world, the people invented the aircraft, the people that all inventions is rooted in eternal life. No country has ever invented anything without a revival. The right brothers who invented the aircraft. The aerodynamics who discovered the, the law of aerodynamics, they were the sons of a pastor. Go and read church history. Germany was never in a place of invention until Germany had eternal life. Martin Luther stopped. Germany experienced a revival. Do you know the reason why China is only copying of eternal life? They can only copy, they cannot produce. Because huh, who God called the things with be not. God created the things. And you can only create by having the nature of God. So coming to church and learning the word of God make you naturally creative. You will have ideas that ordinary people will not have. Supernaturally, that thing will just be burning in the inside. Thomas Edison, who invented the bulb, was a Christian. His temple is still there in New Jersey. I've been there. The laboratory with the church by the side. All they invented, my, uh, uh, went to Isaac Newton, was almost like a pastor. None of them ever created anything without eternal life. Now listen. Where is Socrates? All his philosophy, he died. He died confessing that demons have deceived him. What is Plato? Go and check there. All those who follow the devil, nothing to produce. No. Philosophy, huh? Philosophy is just living and, and, and this is what, you, you, you know, philosophy calls you to live in trial and error. That's what it is. You are only trying something. You don't know how to arrive. The Greek were philosophers. That is why Paul said that. The, the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. And Paul said that to the Jews it's a stumbling block. And to the Greek it's foolishness. Because when eternal life is not there, faith becomes foolishness. We have told all night. All night. I'm telling you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and tell you anything. This is the message. I've been praying and fasting. Lord, give me a message for this generation. Give me a message for this generation. Give me a message for this generation. What do they need to hear? May we not preach what they want to hear. May we preach what you want them to hear. It is very dangerous for me to come to church and preach what you want to hear it is even dangerous for me to preach a message so that you won't leave church if all of us sitting here our target is not heavy we are wasting our time there's nothing on this earth oh this earth nothing 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 what is like good hotels nothing you sleep tempera most of the hotels we sleep, if God is not with you, demons have slept there before you came there. 
So I go to a hotel, I check in there, I get a room. The Lord said, You can't sleep here. I said, Why? He said, The one who slept here before he came was a satanic agent. Then I'll go down. Ask the people that travel. Every time I'm struggling to change my room. Every time. Every time. Sometimes too. I remember one day I went to I went to one of the Arab countries. I slept in a hotel room and I told the Lord, when I was hesitant, I said, Lord, hmm, anybody with that good spirit will never sleep in this room. They were checking a man into my hotel. I was checking out. He went there, look at the room. He said, I don't want to sleep here. I said, I know where you are coming from. That's what it is. What is it? Life? Getting a car? You can move it and the car will kill you. Oh, getting a plane? So even the material, if God is wrong with you, you can't enjoy it. It will kill you within a second. Chasing a wife, chasing women and getting one. Ha! Do you remember what I preached at the one? I said, no sex is free. Except the one in the context of marriage. You pay for it. You, you can pay for it for 50 years. Every day you are paying. Even when the woman has left you, you are still paying. Nothing is free. When you live outside the context of the world, toil is inevitable. There is no substitute for it. Once you live outside the context of God's word, you are stepping into the area of toilet. Peter was walking on the water as long as he's looking at Jesus. When he turned, he started sinking. <laughs> so you see, you can, you see, liquid becomes solid when we're looking at the word. Uh, somebody will shout for Jesus when this week comes. I said, somebody will give the Lord a shout after I finish preaching. Are you hearing what I'm preaching now today? Liquid, when others are sinking, you'll be walking as if it's a solid ground. Just because, because the word has called Peter, Peter, master, if it is you, bid me to come. The master looked at Peter and said, come. Peter jumped from the sea. He jumped from the boat made by wood and stepped in water and come. And come, come, come. And the Bible said, when Peter turned and looked at the boisterous wind, so there's a lot of boisterous wind around you. But the only reason you can't see is as long as you're looking at the wind. The winds are impotent. The winds are ineffective. The winds have no power over you. But once you start looking at the wind, and turn from the wind, no substitute for your sink. This is the message you need for to, 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 to enter 2014. No. No. Some people were kissing their girlfriends in the Philippines when the tsunami typhoon came to carry them. Mm. There were 5,000 people that died. Don't tell me everybody was in church. Some were fornicating, some were adultering, some were kissing, and the coconut tree. Not, because the thing will carry you and the tree all. <laughs> I told them, I don't I say, it is not. <laughs> it is not death. It is about where you go after death. Look at somebody say the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Where with us a young man keep his way pure by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Oh, Joshua said that not a word fail of any good thing which the Lord has spoken. All came to pass. All the promises of God in him are yea and amen to the glory of God the Father. My word will never return to me void. When I send the word to accomplish the purpose, he didn't say when he sent me, he said when I send the word, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I like the way the tree Bible, they cannot say, assembly and make one so high and then not second near. I like the way they, they treat Bible. Make quans, I grab him there. Make quans so hand. And they may not say come here. I don't know how to say that in infantry. Huh? Light onto my path. <laughs> if you don't have the word, you'll stumble. I'm telling you. If you don't have the word, you'll be crushed. Do you know the reason we are struggling? is absence of the word. You can never laugh outside God's word. No, you can't. All those guys who are buying you uh, chocolate and things and you think they love you, it just last. Anybody that don't love God cannot love you. 
there is a question mark with that laugh. <laughs> I know the only reason I love Mama Ivy is because of the way I love God. She would never have enjoyed this guy because my background is crazy. Rough background. My grandfather has 54 children. And the latter race are stronger than the former race. So, grandfather 54, therefore, grandchild. Okay, simple proportion. If grandfather is equal to 54, therefore, grandson. Calculate it. Okay. So, some of you sit here without Christ, eh? No, 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 no. That is what I told you, Adonai. If we, so all of us here, if we take the Jesus out of us, the rest is. Mm. That is why, listen, if you don't have Christ and you are hanging around me, you are more dangerous to me than the devil. Because you can't put an old one in a new wine scale. It will not work. The Bible says to break. So you can't be a believing girl and be married an unbeliever. You are breaking the principle that is called that. They say, ah, how do you call it? He said that. He said that hmm, for the, the spirit of the life in Christ has made me free from the law of the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there is a law that separates the, the believer from the unbeliever. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. So when I'm in a believer and I'm still sinning, then I'm infringing on the law of sin and death. <laughs> are we together here yeah. hallelujah the word the word he sent his word he didn't send healing no do you know the way you are depressed in the midst of in, in the center of trouble you don't have the word you don't have the word if you don't have the word and crisis come you'll be oppressed and depressed the word gives you confidence and peace in the midst of storm Oh, because I know I'm coming out of this thing. I know I'm not staying here for long. I know my Redeemer lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives off here, he's gone. I can do all things through Christ. I'm talking about the word. Okay. Can I detour a little bit? Let me, let me, <laughs> somebody say the word. When, many years ago, or some, some time ago, I preached a message and I said that. In the Old Testament, when the city has walls, the city is protected. When the city doesn't have walls, the city is vulnerable. So one of the security in the Old Testament, you remember, you remember, you remember the Hemiah went to build the walls of Jerusalem. You remember that one of the reasons why Israel couldn't get through to the promised land was that they must get through Jericho. And Jericho was straightly shut down. And the Bible says Jericho was so thick that five horses can ride on it. That is the thickness of the wall. It shows the sign and their depth in protection. And as I was standing, the Lord told me, say, as the walls are around the cities and the countries in the Old Testament, so the word is around the believer. So when you have the word, you are protected. When you don't have the word, you are vulnerable. The word. The word. The word. This generation has been deceived by a lot of ignorant preachers in the radio. What should I hear? Brahona mencha wasi. Ene me trase ma ya kontre. Na kontre ne me ye di frano pa bel sex. Ne ma be trase. So you are confused. Anytime people dream, they are looking for interpretation. Ignorant, complete ignorant. And my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. No. And then I keep telling you, but you won't listen. And you come back to me, daddy. I had a dream. I had a dream. I had a dream. You are the only one who dreams. You are not even supposed to dream because you are too young. Somebody said, what do you mean by that? I will pour out my spirit upon all friends. Your sons and daughters will see visions. Which means that visions are higher than dreams. And your old man will see dreams. Abraham was 70 years and he was seeing visions. How old are you? Now I want to ask you a question. Stop clapping, let me ask you a question. For you to sit here, and God take you in a trance for five minutes, show you something in the spirit and bring you back. And to sleep after loaded with Banku and dream. Which one do you like? Oh, may you see visions from today. I say, may the Lord give you visions from today. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Mm. Look at someone say, mm. Look at someone and say, we have been discussing your ignorance. Tell the person, we are very concerned about your ignorance. We have been discussing it. The word. 
the word the word is the anchor of christianity a powerful christian is the one who has the word in the inside of him the word helps you to behave well the word makes you not just misbehave it corrects you it puts you jesus said you are doing error because you don't know the word or the power of god you say you make the word of god of none effect by the traditions of your fathers if you step into tradition you mix the word i am an error and therefore i won't marry because you are a guy you are ignorant because with somebody is a guy and he become a christian he's no more a guy he's a christian so I used to be an Asante, but now I'm a Christian. And in Christ Jesus, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile, there is no Northerner, there is no Southerner, there is no Westerner, there is no Easterner. The blood has bind us together. Oh, the Lord bless those who are clapping and shouting for him. The word. The word. Once, a, once you have the word, you are protected. The only reason you are not respecting your husband is that you like the word. Because you have not read the two keys, two key words in marriage. Lord, husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husbands. Anytime these two key words break in the marriage, you don't have marriage, you have roommates. Once this cycle breaks, there is no marriage. I don't care what mansion you live in. Husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. It's the anchor of every true marriage. If this two cycle breaks, there is no marriage. Once a man stops loving his wife, and once a woman stops submitting to his husband, marriage is broken. So most of divorce didn't start at, it, 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 it doesn't start at the, the courtroom. It starts when this particular cycle breaks. Because you stop having any fellowship for six, seven months before you went to the high court. By the time people are going to court to go and break marriage, everyone has already chosen their partners already. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Two people are married. Now they've broken fellowship. For six months, eight months, nobody is touching anybody. Then at that time, this boss went to see Sister Shenene. And then Sister Shukanda too went to see Sister Bokoko. And then whilst, whilst the, the two of them are courting in secret, they are afraid that people say, but you people are married. So let's go to the court and break it quickly. So that I can link them. Because human beings are such a way that anytime you are running away from something, we need a substitute. Yes. You're not listening to me. Breaks. And the reason why God says I hate divorce is that women are the same. The way he created that. So whatever you are running away from another woman, whatever be the reason why you are divorcing, the next one you are going to take, God will make sure you put double portion in that one. Oh, 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 That is why 50% of second marriages still don't stand. This one is not for boys and girls. This one is deep. So our Rena Okomunu, tread on it cautiously. Marriage is not for boys and girls. It's not I love you, I love you. It's bigger than that. It must be based on the word. The only way I'm marrying your mother is I marry her based on the word. No. Without the word, you'll be an adulterous Christian. Without the word, you'll be fornicating. I heard that the, the, the Asante preacher in the bus, he said that, what but Jamal, Jamal, who I know, so say, fe, fe, fe. It was a very powerful guy. I'm telling you, the guy doesn't compromise at all. I, he, he released a new one that I saw. He said, Encrophobia, her money, be a Now, I'm addressing. Now, I'm the chain. At home, come. Now, chain. I'm the Yesu. Cross at home. Now, I'm the Yesu. I saw Munufu. I said, This one, I'm not <laughs> This one is too strong. Hallelujah. And he says, Encrophobia, Yesu, Baba, show him. Why? After Richard Robert, I will invite him here. Yeah. Uh, because he doesn't speak English. The word. Tell somebody the word, the word, the word, the word. You need the word. Hey, without the word, you will go to office depressed. Some of you by Monday morning, you wish Monday will not come. Without the word, you go to the office depressed. Without the word, you come home as if there's a burden on you. Without the word, you can't enjoy your children. Without the word, you cannot walk in love. The word is the anchor of Christianity. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the word is faith food. 
<laughs> now let me divert a little bit and get ready to close. Now, how important is the word? <laughs> it's more important than anything. You remember First John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Watch this, in the beginning was what? So be before everything started, the word was there. Hello? Before everything began, the word was there. Everything in this word came to meet the word. In the beginning was the word. So before everything began, the word was there. And the word was with God. And the word was what? God. So, <laughs> how many of you have seen God before? Okay. That is a lie of the devil. I just quoted the scripture. And the word was what? So anytime you take your Bible, you are seeing God. <laughs> Now, I can tell you why the devil doesn't want you to read the word. Because anytime you open your Bible and you read three chapters, you are with God. And the word was God. The word was God. Not that the word is going to be God. <laughs> My. There's a scripture in the book of Psalms. It says he has exalted his word above himself. Powerful. So the constitution that rules God's kingdom is the word. And constitution becomes the highest authority on every land. Mahama is not the highest authority of Ghana. The highest authority is, that is why even in government there are three arms. You have the, the executive, you have the, uh, what you call the legislation, and then we have the judiciary. Now, Ghana, Ghana didn't respect the judiciary until nine Supreme Court judges. If 24 people couldn't decide the president, nine people would decide. That is why some politicians were caught up and, and brought uh, by what is called, uh, what term do they use? Uh, contempt. And by the contempt, when they stood there, then Ghanaians know that there is another authority. Do you know that for anybody to become a president, the chief justice has to swear them into power? The reason is that everybody must report to somebody. Now let me tell you something. And this is for my daughters. Any man you are caught in with who hates advice, if you marry him, you have married the deputy devil. The Bible says, rebuke the scorner and he will hate you. In the multitude of counseling, there is safety. So you see, anybody that hates counseling is the devil's classmate. Because Satan is the only person that hates counseling. I will ascend to my throne. I will be like the most high. I will ascend above the heavens and above the stars. I, 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 I. And God brought him down. If you listen to me, you make mistakes. I'm preaching the word. Mm -hmm. I was telling my mom, it's not everybody that can come to our church. For instance, if you are not ready to lead a holy life, this place will be very uncomfortable for you. No, because every message you hear something there. If you are not ready to love your wife, this place, if you divorce your life, I remove two of your teeth. No, no, I have a plier in my body saying that, pa, 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 you look like a rabbit. You cannot come and tell me. If we, if we join your holy matrimony here, we might not tell you for better and for worse. Now, everybody and their faith. Not that it is wrong. I'm not condemning what others do. I just say that it's not in the Bible. It's not there. It's not there. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Democracy is not in the Bible, but we practice it. It doesn't mean God is against it. Hello? Now, watch this. The only reason I don't want for that, the reason why they say for better for worse is that they anticipate that there will be some trouble. And when the trouble comes, you don't run away. Okay. 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 If you have the word, whether you say for better for worse or not say it, the trouble will come. Because marriage is a school without graduation. So whether you say it or you don't say it, it doesn't mean you escape the things you once learned as a result of marriage. Because God will use your wife to shape in your character. God will use your husband and your wife to deal with your ego. I'm standing here preaching, pam, pam, pam. When this lady makes his eyes somewhere and change his faith, I become very cool. Because if I don't, if I continue, the thing will spark into something. 
And it's very dangerous to be in exchange of words with a woman because he's anointed for more words. <laughs> One Nigerian man came to my office and said that, Prophet, Prophet, can you imagine my wife told me that I am a pig? I said, what did you say? They said, okay, I told her that he's a useless lady. And I said, he look at this, I'm useless, you are a pig. He said, you are not just useless, you, 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 are, you are a professor in uselessness. And then they came to me, I said, did you tell her that he's a prophet? He's not just a pig, he is a mosquito and hippopotamus. He reduced the guy. And I told the guy, I said that, you don't exchange words with a woman. Particularly if he's not Polish and come from a very good background. If he was raising baby, he said, don't, don't do that. Jesus, if he's raising, he, 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 oh, can, can I go deeper? Don't exchange words with a woman who was raising Bukum. If he on Sunday when he's going to church, me as a mama by Kama by Obana. No, you tell you, or what's wrong with you? I'm ready to come and deal with you. I told you the story about a girl woman who went to church with his husband. The husband was sitting. The pastor said that I want to pray for widows. Anybody here that is a widow, the Lord has led me. Sitting by his husband and woke up and started going. And the husband said, Hey, minister, hey, 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 hey. can you imagine? He said, Huh? You don't pay school fees. You don't, you don't, you don't give job money. And I told her, that I'm a widow. Came to stand there. The husband was shivering. He went to the say, Pastor, I'm here. This is my wife. If you don't love a woman, you are you are dead, but he has declared you dead. Yes. Walking corpse. Do you know the reason God commanded us to love our wives? God knows the reason why He said we do. All the commandments they are for our good. Because we, we you, you see, nobody can tell anybody by your side. You can you don't even know your children. We don't know our wives, you don't know our husband. Only God knows who we are. Even let me go deeper, we don't even know ourselves. Me standing, I don't think I know who I am. Only God can tell me who I am. That is why a lot of you were raising up to school. They look at your senior brothers who were doing a little bit good in class. And they say, you, you are nothing. And they were, they were the preferred ones. Until last minute, you overtook all of them. At the end of the story, you see that you even come out higher than all of them. The reason your parents said that they didn't know who you are. Sometimes your teacher said that you are wasting your time in school. You don't know who you are. My, my, my mathematics teacher one day came to tell me the cutlass. You were in the school. He came there with cutlass and crammed there. People were running. He said, sit down. Come. He said, Nanaja, stand up. Come. I bought this catalog for you. <laughs> what is it for? He said, go to my friend. My grandfather has some land in Kroboduma. He said, go and read because you are wasting your time here. <laughs> the only reason is I was no good in mathematics. And because I was no good, the man who doesn't know who I am has concluded I must go and read. Today, oh Jesus Christ, I may not be a mathematician, but give me a microphone. Jesus, get us some people there. Only God can tell you who you are. Yes. As a church, may the Lord show you who you are. Yes. I don't care what they have said. Hey. Nobody knows you. Hey. Look at somebody say, you don't know me. You don't know, you me. Don't know me. Be careful the way you think about be me. Way it can you. even be your wife or your husband. Hey. Only God knows who you are. Yes. Jeremiah, before I form you in the womb, I know you. Yes. I knew you. That is what God said. Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I ordained you. Okay, someone said, Be careful the way you treat me because you don't know me. Listen, I used to look at President Mahama those days 10 years ago, 15 years ago. He's always sitting on television. Good morning, Ghana. No, but how then they are asking him questions. Communication. Nobody knew he was becoming president. The highest was deputy minister. Who knew? Obama was looking for job. Yes. Obama was looking for job. Went to his wife, Michelle's firm. Wrote application, and Michelle employed him. He didn't know one day he would make her a first lady. God can tell you who you are. When you run away from God, you are running away from your glorious destiny. Nobody can tell you who you are. People would rather tell you opposite who you are. Because not everybody will celebrate your blessing. 
let me tell you something i am trying to find out the antidote why Ghanaians do you know that this country there's a spirit here that love the foreigner to prosper than the than the the citizen the indigenous people who lives here so i begin to pray and say lord what is the problem and the lord told me something that shocked me shocked do you want to hear and how much will you pay for hearing that and how much did i find? the lord told me something that shocked me hallelujah if i'm living with this guy as a neighbor and he's by my side and we are all driving tigo he's comfortable i'm comfortable if i bring a rose royce the problem is not because of my rose royce but my rose royce has exposed his failure now this is why the devil trap us so your success exposes other people's failure now the spirit in ghana is not like the nigerian spirit the Nigerian man will come and say that. Let me find out what made him call the Rolls Royce. The Ghana man said, No, why can you get a Rolls Royce? Let me reduce you from Rolls Royce to Tigo. So that so there is no ambition or striving us to come after what others have gotten. We rather want to bring them down. It will never be in this assembly and this family. I have a message for you. I have served God in poverty. God has blessed me so much and I've tasted it. And I've seen that it's better to serve God in blessing than poverty. Listen. There was a disaster in the Philippines. Before they announced that this thing will come, some of them who has money chartered jet and flew out of the place. If you have a bicycle, tell me where you are going. <laughs> Bible has never approved poverty. The most serious statement about poverty in the Bible is that there was a, a poor man who used his wisdom to save a country, a city. Yet no one remembered that man. And a, another army besieged that city. They were going to destroy the city. The poor man used his wisdom to bring the city out of the destruction. Yet from the president to the least person, no one remembered him. And Solomon said, this thing, what I saw under the sun, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Check Ecclesiastes. So you sit down and pick the Ghana spirit. Many years ago, I have a Nigerian friend preacher. Somebody bought me a, a five series Mercedes BMW. Is it BMW? Eh? A, like a gift. At that time, where I am, it was the champion car around. You see, in the kingdom of the blind, the quarter is always the king. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody is blind, so when your eye is quarter, why not? We crown you. And so when I brought it, there were all kinds of tongues. And so the pastor, young pastor friend, he came to my house. And I was very boasting about the car because the BM has a certain sound. And settings are feeling good. He came to my house and he said, let me visit you. Look, I said, what's your car? I look, I show him. He said, ha, you, this anointed, this is a toy. I look at the car. He said, this car is a toy. He said, you, you, you. He said if you're in Nigeria, uh, somebody will get angry for driving this car. He said, it's a toy. So I went to Lagos, Ikeja, and I went to his house, and I saw it. He said, yeah. He said, the blessings of the Lord. And then I, I saw the kind of cars he drives. And he told me, he said, yeah, Mikra, I'm not at the level of your anointing, but look at what I drive. It means that, <laughs> no, I won't continue the message. It's not, you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear. Hallelujah. I told you that we were checking the first 10 richest people, richest preachers. People that God has blessed in the kingdom as a standard for all of us to copy. The richest preachers in the world. The first one on the top is Bishop T.D. Jakes. He has 150 million in his bank account. Everything is on the internet. When you go Google, first 10 preachers, richest preachers. Bishop Oye Depot is the second. Now, when you check the list, it's only Americans and Nigerians. How many Americans? T.D. Jakes, Kenneth Copeland, Clifford Dollar, Benny Hinn, and who? So four Americans, six Nigerians. Oye Depo, Adeboye, Chris Oyakilome, Asimolo, TB Joshua. There are five. So five, five. I, I've forgotten the last person in America. Hmm? TDJs, Benny Hinn, 
Can a Copeland claim for dollar? There's one person more. Huh? No, my is not there. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Even Billy Graham, he, it's a fortune he left for his son. Because Billy Graham did some investment there. Even in his lifetime, that money will never dry up. $40 million in his account. The least one is TB Joshua, 50 million. On the other chain and say, I'll overtake him recently. No, listen. That's what it is. So we can't sit here. Now, I saw Nigerian preachers respect a lot of our Ghanaian preachers. Bishop Odepo said, Every time Dr. Mesotabu preaches, I must get the tape. My friend in Ikeja, he told me, he said, I went to Daki Wadmes Bishop and I bought everything he has. One of them said, he said, when you take the anointing of Ghanaian preachers, it doesn't correspond with their blessing. He said, it's a mismark. And that this, is the, this is the secret. Let me tell you this. <laughs> if you sit here, the level of my thinking in prosperity will limit your level of prosperity. It means that ah, a poor pastor cannot pastor a rich people. Now, listen to this story. Oye the Pope bought the first aircraft in his church. He bought it in 19, I think, 91. There about May. He bought it May. By June, 11 people in the church bought aircraft. Now, they were going for a conference in London and they flew 12 aircraft to Gatwick Airport and took over the airport and lined 12 aircraft from Nigeria. For instance, if you are here and you have poverty mentality, you start getting angry in your spirit. And that is not anger, it's a demon. Now watch this. A man was serving idols. In, child, in, in the awe of Chadis, and the Lord said, Abraham, leave your father and your mother, come to a land that I will show you, and I will bless you. Right. The next verse said, Abraham was rich in cattle, in gold, in silver, in men servant, in maid servant. And Isaac, God said, don't go to Abimelech as your father Gwen. Stay in this land and I will bless you. And Isaac saw him famine and reap a hundredfold. And the Philistines envy him. One man be envied by a country. Okay, can I go deeper? And Jacob left with a staff and a pillow and went to stay in Laban's house and returned with millions of flocks. And Laban envied him. So the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, who do you resemble? And Jesus said, I saw some ignorant preachers say, and Jesus Christ came. And Jesus Christ was not, Jesus Christ didn't ride the car. The most expensive car at that time was a donkey, and he rode one. What about this scripture? And Jesus Christ was rich. But for your sake, he became poor. So even when Jesus came and transferred his word for you, still will not accept it. Oh. 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 I'm telling you, I have checked the chain. No, 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 no. Oh, the boy is building a third university. What poverty can do that? He built Covenant University. He has built, uh, uh, which one? Uh, Huh? Landmark University and they are building King's University. Three universities. Often now, Covenant University is the normal one university. When the, 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 the Nigerian National Whatever Accreditation came to do, it was number one in Nigeria and number seven in Africa. This, this is one of the youngest universities around. Building it up. Who said that, who said that poverty glorifies God? Jesus Christ was living this heaven and told him that he's going to prepare in my father's place are many mansions. So he heaven don't have houses, they have mansions. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, I don't know about you, but I don't believe in poverty. Tell the person, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. And don't just say it, let it be in your spirit. I don't believe in it. Let me tell you something. There is a righteous way to prosper. Pay your tithe. Be a celebrated giver. Give. Oye, the poor contact is anointing of prosperity from Copeland. 
He got an impartation from Copeland. Today is first. Copeland is seventh. Think about it. Think about it. He has five aircraft. They've given him hunger. They've given him authority to build a hunger in the international airport in Nigeria. Can a Copeland has a runway in his church compound? So the plane lands in a church compound. City and clap for poverty. And come to church and then a and you know go. When I married my wife, I told her, I told her, I told her something. I said, I don't believe in poverty. Even though we started in a single bedroom, we are not going to live here. I told him, I said, by, by the time I'm 40 years, I will live in the richest place in Ghana. I'm living there. <laughs> He's here. If you say I'm lying, you should remember. I told her this 10 years ago. I'm there. It's not just math talk. Faith is not just a good confession, a good profession. Act on what you say. Act on it. <laughs> you see, if you sit the Bible and read from Genesis to Revelation, you hate poverty. Nobody will read the Bible under the unseen and the influence of the Holy Ghost and never love poverty. Never. Never. Nobody. The richest black man in America is a Nigerian. I follow all these statistics. Ghanaians are not paying, 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 paying. It's any Ghana that somebody can call from Buko and insult the president. No, no, Mahama, no, but what say. He has never even teach a classroom he has never taught anybody in class one do you know what it means to become a president do you know <laughs> no. ignorant and a lot of you are sitting let me tell you something coming to church is not just coming to cement your poverty if you are that person here you are in the wrong place no when we went to israel they were here we were sleeping in the same hotel that the the, the secretary state of america was sleeping the same thing, John Kerry. Now, the hotel we're sleeping, that is where now Netanyahu has invited the top billionaires. The, the, the same board was there. Something governors of uh, Jewish, top Jewish billionaire governors meeting. And they were all sleeping in the same hotel we're sleeping. Now, when they saw us as black people, they are shocked. Sometimes they confirm us and say, ah, Did you say, What is the pastor? We want to see him. We were the first black people to sleep in that hotel. When we went there, Benny Hill was there. John Kerry, now listen, my room, John Kerry was up because I was in the executive suite and he was in the presidential suite. Up. There was a lot of military people at the back of the balcony. One of them was sitting on my back on me. I woke up and said, how are you doing? Shalom, he said, shalom, keep guiding me. <laughs> and I told them at the honor, this is the Secretary of State in America. This is the Secretary of State of Heaven. Which one will you guide? Poverty is a disgrace. It makes you serve God. Now, it is a mentality. Listen to me. If you are here with a desire to advance God's kingdom, you will never embrace poverty. Never. Never. We gather money. Listen to me. We went to uh, uh, Israel with close to $15,000 to send it to orphanage for five one week they look around they couldn't find orphanage now anna told me that anna told me say i'm still searching because the way we operate our orphanages here is different from the way you operate it if somebody gives birth and doesn't have the children he said they are kings of people looking for the children to adopt and those children are living even better and those people because they are always adopted by mortal millionaires. We brought our 15,000 back. So we are going to distribute it and share it to the orphanages in Ghana. We couldn't get one. Who said poverty is... Who said poverty? How many orphanages are in Ghana? We have adopted over 10 that we give them more. It's a long time. We sometimes bags of rice. Sometimes Abraham go there and say, when I went there, they have the last bag and they were praying for food. We went to Israel. There was not one to found. Sit in church and think like those people out there talking. Mm -hmm. People that I want to act, they don't talk too much. People that are always talking, they have nothing to act about. Yes. No. That's the way we, that 
is our web prayer center. We do our things the way we do our things. You can't change us from doing that. If we change our style, God will deal with us. Because we have to be pay setters. We can't live our life that way. Jesus is coming very soon. How do you win the millionaire who is sitting in East Legon? Going there and begging. How do you win them? All my Jewish friends are thinking about Christ. They are thinking. They look at the way I preach. They look at the confidence. They look at where I take my people to sleep. They are shocked. When I go to David Citadel, the manager said that we can sack everybody from hotel, but that Ghanaian group, we won't sack them. Because they've consistently come here and stay here. He said, we won't sack them. All the hotel believes I'm a mortal millionaire. One of them, listen, one of them asked me a question. He said, uh, uh, so when are you going? I said, we're leaving tomorrow. It's okay. He said, did you bring your private jet? I said, this time I didn't bring it. <laughs> no, there is nothing like going to tell them that. Uh, are you listening? Somebody said, you lied. I didn't ask him the question. I didn't bring it this time. Very soon when I bring it to you here. Because a lot of the people that sleep in the hotel, when we went, they say most of them came with their private jet. Yes. So the girl was thinking, I'm one of them. Yes, you are, you are, you are, you are. As a man thinking, so he is. Don't just sit here and shout, go home and think. Are you not tired of borrowing? Somebody didn't come to and I said, Why is it Cabreta? Listen, prosperity has nothing to do with money, it's the state of your mind. Because I don't think poor, I can never be poor. I don't think poor at all. I don't think poor. I don't think poverty for anybody. I pray for prosperity for my children. The Lord told me from now to 2014, December, take one month and anoint them for prosperity. He said, take one Sunday in every month and impact the spirit of prosperity. When you name that day the same way, I will manifest myself the same way. I am the Lord that gives the power to prosper. The Lord told me yesterday, I was in a presence, he said, take one day from now to the end of the day. He said, take one Sunday every sunday and name that the day of prosperity and impact an oil upon their lives and i'll manifest myself according to the way so i'll put a prophetic word in your mouth to declare or the post say one of the pillars of the winner's trouble prosperity is the prophetic word of prosperity declare nobody in this church must be you are not in the house of god to become a liability you must be an asset The end time kingdom must be built. End time kingdom must be built. It must be built. People are doing things for God. I'm telling you. I read a story about Winners Chapel. They have made them the number one ambassadors of United Nations to poor countries. Oil the poor has bought OC liner ship that invests ten million dollars in poor countries for United Nations. Church. 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 Church, you think church is to come and warm pews and to come and sit in nice and, and sit down and go. It's not about quantity. No, it's not about. No, it's not. Church is not like that. No, Jesus Christ came to preach. Check that scripture for me. Mary Magdalene, Jesus, they ministered to him out of their substance. Luke chapter what? 8 verse 1? 8 verse 2. Give me Luke chapter 8 and let's read from verse number 1. It's there. Look at it. Who said that? And it came to pass after all. Some of you are sitting here. Do you know my prayer? One day, may the Holy Ghost confuse you that you will write a resignation letter, step out of the office and start your own company and may that company employ 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. It is possible for with God, all things are possible. Now listen. The hotel we sleep in, David Citizen, it used to be healthy as a franchise. One day, the man got angry. And came and said, no more with Hilton. They said, seven million dollars. He paid them. He said, then he changed the name after he paid them and started the visitism. He said, the seven million, he got it back in three months. This is years ago. Until you become restless, you stay in your poverty. You can't tell me that I preach. I preach every kind of message. 
I preach every kind of I'm a balanced preacher. No. We righteousness is not a sign, it's not a, 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 an ingredient for poverty. No. Watch this. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching the, and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom. There are two ways you have to know there. He was preaching and showing glad tidings. Preaching and showing glad tidings. Doing crusade. Do you know it takes a lot of money to do crusade? Yes. And this Jesus was doing crusade. This is a man who came from heaven. Now watch this. Preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. That word there is a very powerful. And the twelve were with him. Everybody say the twelve. There is a reason the Bible put it. It means that they were on his payroll. All of them were having wives and children. Peter cracked, uh, Isa cracked a joke. They said, they asked Peter, why did you betray Jesus? How do you deny? He said, because he healed my mother-in-law. Because I wanted my mother-in-law to really punish, God punish him and he healed him. That is why. So he has a mother-in-law. And he said that in their area, nobody likes his mother-in-law. I said, not in our area. In Ghana, we love our mother-in-laws. We live with them. Some of them are like our mothers. Now watch this. The 12 were with him. When you read the Bible and you see the semicolon and then God is making a statement, he, <laughs> he's trying to amplify something. It means that he was going about and preaching the gospel and the 12 were with him. Now, all their children and their wives were depending on Jesus. Let's see how Jesus Christ maintained them from verse number 2. Huh? And a certain woman, that is why I'm praying for more women, but not stingy ones. Certain woman which has been healed of evil, uh, which has been healed of evil spirit and infirmities. You can start serving God from anywhere. They came to church with demons, but Jesus cast the demons out. Which has been healed of evil spirit. Mary called Magdalene, number one. Out of whom went seven demons. Oh, Jesus Christ. Go to the next verse. Hmm. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa. Now give, give me the New Living Translation. Hmm. On, from this point. Don't touch the movie. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager. Political connection. Herod, if you know the story about Herod, then this man is loaded. He manages Herod's money. Susanna and many others who, contrib who were contributing their own resources to support Jesus. So who said, I don't need support? If Jesus Christ get the support, who said I don't need it? The Lord told me, He said, the way you preach for them to prosper will determine. Or they post jet. Oh, the first three. He said, said, I can walk to a, 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 an aircraft factory and buy my own jet. But for the five, it was bought by the church. The first one, I came to church one Saturday. It was not even Sunday morning. He said, the Lord just spoke to me. It's time to buy the jet. When they collected an offering, could buy two. Nigeria. He said, some people, no pray, no pray announcement. Like I came to church today and I announced, okay, it's time for me to buy a, a Rolls Royce. Somebody will take his back. Okay. Okay. They saw the post said people were shivering. Winners. Do you see how the boy bought his plane? Came to church, they say Papa has been preaching for almost 15 years. We don't want Papa to ride on a commercial plane again. Small, small preachers are even riding aircraft. It's time to bore Papa's jet. Somebody to the microphone. Shut up! What kind of disgrace is that? If Papa wanted, how do you come and announce it? How much is a jet now? They say, why? Uh, they say, why? We want to check $40 million. This is the check. Go and bring the plane. Because you don't want to invest in God's kingdom. If you are here and you, are, you don't have the desire to be a kingdom investor, you have no future. No, everything, there will be a limit on your blessing. Say, Hallelujah. My giving life has paved way for God to make a little things comfortable for me. I give. Straight. 
There's no magic in the kingdom. These people are supporting Jesus out of their softness. And my woman, Shusana, or Kwaniku, or the Safani Kuntrim, say, and I could have Sanchez, one million, Mami Masuku. This account of Rabatu. Heros manager, or the Safani Kuntrim, I could have Sanchez. You say, Why are you taking the checks? The sign. And I do not know what is going to happen. Don't touch me. What is it? Leave me alone. What is it? Why are you angry? Give me two million. <laughs> and because God is backing the issue, the man will sign it. But if you need two million, why are you angry? Do it fast. When I said it the other time, you didn't bring it. What is it? Okay, I'll make it three million. Okay, do it. Then once he's signing, okay, honey, I love you. Then, then friend, Peter, where are you? I'm in Capernaum. Meet me at uh, uh, Jerusalem. Take this check, give it to Jesus, tell him that next week I'll bring more. <laughs> Jesus Christ was preaching from village to village, city to city. Showing glad tidings. Ha! Judas was going to betray Jesus. He went out of the Lord's Supper and running away. Everybody thought he was going to give money to the poor. It means that Jesus was supporting the poor. Who said Jesus was broke? This gospel has no connection with poverty. Let me tell you where the change of it. Let me tell you the foundation. I'll say this and I'll close. I'll give you uh, four, four, four faith PowerPoints and I'll close. Now, do you know where the foundation of the poverty mentality in the church entered? Okay. The Ghanaian revival, unfortunately, started from the Western people coming here as missionaries. They came to meet people serving idols. Then they told them, that you can still serve the idols after that come to church. And they started teaching that kind of message. Because most of the missionaries were supported from abroad. So they have to come away and present the gospel like the gospel goes with poverty. And it has become the foundation for where we are coming from. Presby, Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, which most of the charismatic and Pentecostal sprang from. So when you go to Presbyterian and the Orthodox Church, thank God for revival now. They don't give offering. They tell it, they call it collection. And the collection is coins. So some of you come from that background and it has still grip you up. So you come to church and you will never give an offering to God more than one Ghana CD. Forgotten that your prosperity is linked to what you put on God's sacrifice and altar. Right. So your life has become like. Let me tell you this. If your salary gets finished before the man ends, you are not living, you are surviving. You are either living or you are surviving. The Jewish people will not even allow orphanages. People gave money. Teresa showed it to me. Over $10,000. We walk from Galilee to Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. You couldn't find an orphanage. And that was on computer. Say no. The people are in queue. Some of them are adopting them to foreign countries. Blessings. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. How will you feel when one day this church has brought an orphanage? Huh. And some of the children has grown from the orphanage to become president in the future. Amen. It will not come by living in poverty. You must give until the heavens on your head open. Give and give and give and give until the heavens on your head get open. Stop giving offering one Ghana city and two Ghana city. Graduate from there. Your life was not like this. God has blessed you a little bit. May you give to God on the same acceleration as if He is blessing you. The same capacity God is blessing you, start giving that way. You can only do that based on the word. Am I making sense? Jesus Christ. Write this faith PowerPoint down. Hallelujah. Faith redrawals as a result of word deposit. Everybody say faith redrawals are 
the result of word what? It is, a, it is a book I'm writing. I taught a lot of them in, in Hebrew. Faith redraw us is as a result of word deposit. Now I want to ask you a question. Can you go to a bank to redraw money when you have not made any deposit? No. Can you sign a check of 1,000 Ghana CDs when all your deposit is 500 CDs? So you sign a check according to what is in your bank account. That is a lot of you go to bank. When you are not sure, you say, please, give me my statement. And then when they write your balance, then you sign a check according to it. Now, faith has the capacity to redraw, but faith can only redraw as a result of the amount of word you have deposited in your spirit. That is the PowerPoint. So faith redraws is as a result of word deposit. The more word you have, the more you can redraw. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the more you hear, the more it loads the word in your heart. The more word you have, the more you can redraw. Faith redraws is as a result of word deposit. This house, we refuse to be poor. Amen. We will build universities. We will build prayer cities. We will build all kinds of business ventures. This house will be a household name. If Jesus Christ studies the next 40, 45 years, you will see what God will do. Amen. I am not just saying anything. I know what I'm talking about. Ready in our spirit. When you go and stand before Jesus and he's sharing crown, what will you have? Going to compete with uh, 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 choosers and, and stewards, uh, Mary Magdalene, them who are standing there as a result of their deposit. In every generation, huh, in every generation, God raises people. What are you doing for your generation as a church, as a child of God? What? You, can't, you don't even pay tight. How will you prosper? When some people have left 10%, you are still struggling for 10%. You can never be a kingdom investor. I check all these millionaires, all these preachers, and I saw one cardinal thing giving. Do you know something? This man on the first list, T.D. Jakes, he bought 50, 150 satellites and put it in every prison in Nigeria, in, in America. Every prison house in America. So when T.D. Jess is preaching, the prisoners are watching it live. And they did a statistic and said that he has won almost 50% of them to Christ. Kingdom investors. He's doing manpower conference and satellite is beaming it live on every prison. Inmates. His pastor, that is in charge of the prison ministry, Clerk was a prisoner as a result of DDJ's preaching and good conduct in America when you start behaving well they can cancel your sentence so the copies of TDJs and they will tell him that we want to just suspend his sentence as a result that you will take him he took him he is now a pastor in charge of the prison ministry the guy sharing his testimony in the conference I went with tears over something satellite this it every state in Nigeria TDJs bought it and put it there and when he's preaching Sunday you, in, in U.S., you be beam it life. People are sitting here and thinking that the kingdom is competition. That is the thinking of the Ghanaian preacher. People have been preaching for years. Nothing. No. We have certain thinkings in our heart. We are looking for people to help and bless. We are looking for people to invest in their life. We are looking for people to make their life better. If I see you in church after six months and your life is not better, I am troubled. Let me tell you, the gospel is not just coming to church. Thank God for your nice dress, but Sunday service is not coming to show your dress. Most of the wealthy people in the world, they don't dress. They don't even have time for dressing. Bill Gates got money, resigned from Microsoft, and he's, he's, he's now into, what is it? What, what, uh, uh, charity. Bill Gates is fighting for vaccination for malaria in Africa. Bill Gates, sitting here in church, me the money make up a tally pillar in woman say pillar no. This one is no makeup. I don't know what 
And this one is a very light, fair colored one. So when you after church, paint that Konkonsa makeup for me. Konkonsa ni dos. We are not doing anything. The, the kind of preaching we hear, immature preaching. It is not taking us anywhere. People have sat in church for 15 years, nothing to show. When they see another person drive a new car, no, you can't wear it. So we are sitting in church and nobody is advancing in the cause. Nobody is there. The kingdom is locker. Peter, do you love me? Feed my flocks. Peter, do you love me? Feed my flocks. <laughs> I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among them that are sanctified. Where there's capacity to build people up. Do you know why no God can prosper anybody? I marry in a single bedroom. Today God has blessed me small. No, I don't need it. I don't need anything from. I don't need to steal any money from this. Man. My investment in it is too heavy. I didn't come to this to come and make money. I will never tell this to buy me a car. I've left that stage. Never. The pastor is coming and he's angry preaching. Hey, my preacher, preacher, preacher. Won't talk car, mommy. No, I am looking for who to bless. No. Now, 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 I sit in Ghana. People call me from abroad and say, we have shipped car for you. So I'm not coming to stand here and say, hey, go prayer center, buy me a car. I've left that stage. No, I don't need it. I'm looking for who to bless. I'm looking for what to give into this church. No. I told you one day, I told you some of my investment in this. a heavy duty. This guy standing here, I refuse to be poor. I refuse. I refuse to be poor. Hmm. I want to be a kingdom investor. I want to, I, when I'm exiting this word, after about 90 years, I want to show people how the kingdom look like. Yeah. By the time God, God has used me to do, I will show you how the, you can live on earth as if you are living in heaven. Yeah. We call it heaven on earth. No, listen. It might not take you one day to be there, but when your heart decides a destination, your mind will navigate a way to get there. Yeah. Let your heart decide it. As a man thinking, so easy. So let it be your thinking. Lord, I don't want to be poor. Lord, help me out. I want to bless your kingdom. Lord, if you prosper me, I will give. Now, you are working on the ground. God is checking your character. He's testing you. One day you get a, you get a job, your first salary, you give it as a first fruit. God is checking. He said, no. Hey. Do you know how he cemented Abraham's covenant? The day Abraham was killing Isaac, God said, I've got a man that can keep the side of his covenant. If this guy can kill a son, there is nothing he can do. Abraham, I swear. They say, God, that's an swear. They say, hey, angels, keep quiet. They say, Lord, you say we shouldn't swear. You are swelling. He said, keep quiet. Abraham, I swear. There's nobody for me to swear. Who is more powerful than me? I swear by myself. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, God is swelling. May the Lord swear on your life. God was swelling. He has written in the Lord. That's not swear. And he himself, yeah, hey, angels were begging. Gabriel saying, Lord, I swear. He said, I swear. Abraham, I swear. Then he said, what, what are you swearing about? I said, okay, can I swear by you, Michael? He said, no, who is me? He said, I swear by myself. Abraham, I have caught a man that can keep the side of his covenant. I will multiply you. I will curse everybody that curse you. When anybody curse you, he has come under my curse. For what you have done, Abraham, I have caught you. You will keep the side. When you keep your side of the covenant, you work something inside God out. You are too stingy. Receive grace to be a giver. First in the kingdom, Jesus Christ. Write the second one down. Let me get out of the way. I love this one. Faith. Use it or lose it. If you have faith, you use it or what? If God gives you faith for giving and you don't use it, you lose it. You either use it or you lose it. Hallelujah. <laughs> hmm. This one is mathematic. Mathematics. Kingdom mathematics. I showed them in Israel. Hope plus word is equal to faith. <laughs> Come. Come. Oi. I need one person more. Come. Everybody say hope plus word 
hope plus word is equal to faith. So hope will bring you to church. When you mix the hope with the word of God, it brings you to faith. Once you get to, to faith, you become unstoppable. Watch this. Hmm. 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 All things are possible to him that believe it. We have told all night and we have taken that nevertheless at your word. So they mix hope with the word Jesus Christ has said. It produces faith in their heart. They launch up the net. Now they are two things. Don't think that it was an easy thing. Every fisherman knows that you don't get fishes at the shore. Jesus Christ said they shouldn't even move the boat. They should launch the net. You must respond to that by faith. Because sense will tell you that this thing is not possible. So anytime you are walking by faith, you bury senses. Because faith is too high for sense to handle. Everything God will tell you to do, it will not make sense. The reason is that the law of faith is higher than the law of sense. Sense is limited, but faith is not limited. So hope plus word will lead you to faith. And once you are in faith, you become a hero in the kingdom. By faith. By faith. They subdue kingdoms wrought righteousness, quench the violence of fire, shut the mouth of lions, women got their dead raised back to life. All of them by faith. There's one of my favorite there. By faith, the prostitute Rahab. Whew. Faith can change the prostitute to come in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Faith. It means a prostitute can walk to church today and if he has faith, by 10 days and by one year, he is a champion in the church. You that sit here with your religious spirit will still die. Faith. 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 I quoted Hebrews chapter 11 verse 11 to them. Who said only Abraham connected for Isaac to be born. It's not Abraham alone. Girl, you need your own faith. Because a lot of you are married men who don't have faith. Through faith, Sarah through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. Give me the New Living Translation. I love that one. <laughs> it was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. It was by faith. So you are going to have a child by faith. I will prophesy the word, but you must go and miss it by faith. Hmm. Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Whew. Faith, hope, everybody say hope. hope. Plus, word is equal to faith. It means that if you come here without hope, the word cannot even benefit you. The only person who is hearing me and the word is activating is somebody who has hope. I am only, but I have hope that I'll become a millionaire tomorrow. No, things are not the way it is, but there's a lot of hope. That is why you have to hear the word because the word, Jesus, can I say this? One of the things I love about the word, Jesus, this powerful. Lord, give it to me first. And the word became flesh. It means that the word has a power to translate itself and become flesh. Which means that if you don't have a heart, the word can create one for you. That's right. If you don't have a uterus, the word can create one for you. If they say your kidney is affected, the word can create one. And the word became flesh. Watch this, brother. The lady went to Legon, sat in a biology class, and the professor Luthi came to stand there, whoever. Okay, this is the principle of conception. A woman, after so so and so years, started menstruating. Now, when you are menstruating, you go through safe period. When you are in safe period, and a man sleeps, you are fine. But when you come to ovulation, and you meet a man, conception takes place, and the man is preaching and said that, the man will release a, a sperm. Your egg also will come through the ovulation. When he enter the womb, billions of spermatozoids will be released. But the one that will first enter the womb will create a child. If two enter, it's twins. If one enter and divide into two, unidentical twins. And the man let out this thing. The lady was coming from Lego and got to his house and sometime he saw a man with feathers. He said, Mary, you are highly favored. He said, what is it? He said, the Lord is with you. You are going to conceive and have a child. And we shall call his name Jesus. Immediately he said, then his mind went to the biology class. No, this is a contradiction. Angel, I have a question. He said, what is it? How can this be? Since I don't know a man. Biology class contradicting God's word. The angel said, Mary, 
You don't need a man. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of God's word will overshadow you. That holy thing shall be called the Son of God. The Mary opened his mouth. Be it unto me according to. The moment the girl accepted the word, Jesus Christ entered to the womb. The word has become flesh. Let's sit Rise your feet and give God thanks. Lift up your two hands and give him thanks. Mm-hmm.